family, good morning. Good morning. Man, first of all, let's uh, let's give another round of applause to Josh and Craig for the community. Well, turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter six. In Luke six, verse forty-six, Jesus is speaking. He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? Hallelujah. Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house in the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was very great. Right here we find that Jesus is talking to a crowd. And he says to the crowd of thousands of people that anyone who hears my words but does not put them into practice is like someone building a house without a foundation. Now you're probably thinking, what silly goose would build a house without a foundation? Well, if you've ever been to California or Miami or maybe even the Caribbean, yeah, yeah. It, you, you see these incredible houses uh -huh. that are floating on water. Yeah. And these houses are spectacular. They cost millions of dollars. And yet when the hurricane comes, they fall down into the water. And Jesus says, for those who hear my words, and puts them into practice. They're like someone who dug down deep and built a foundation. You know, it's, it's incredible when you look around Toronto, there's so many buildings that are just incredible to look at. And, uh, you know, granted, in Toronto, it takes a long time to get things done. That's another issue for another day. <laughs> kind of like that Finch West LRT that's uh, supposed to have started months ago, but it never leave that. <laughs> but uh, one particular building that I decided to look at is the CN Tower. Yeah. And uh, it's incredible, before they actually built the CN Tower, they removed 62,000 tons of dirt, what did you digging into the ground to build a 22 feet deep foundation. Wow. That's why the CN Tower can be so high. And, and so bottom line, the point that Jesus is making, is if you want to have a life that actually lasts to the very end, you got to build on the rock, and that rock is Jesus Christ. Are you with me right now? The title of my lesson this morning is Rock Solid. I have three points. Point number one, rock solid convictions. Go to Romans 4. Come on, bro. Come on, Isaiah. Oh, sorry, bro. Romans 4 and verse 18. The Bible is talking about Abraham and it says, In hope, he believed against hope. In hope, he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in his faith when he considered his own body which is as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old. Or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb, no unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith, and he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. But the words that was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord and the church said, Amen. Right here we find rock solid convictions. But what is rock solid convictions? 
It's maintaining your hope even when the results take a long time to come. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. You, you gotta imagine what Abraham was going through. The Bible says that Abraham was 75 years old. When God out of nowhere showed up and said, hey, dude, you're gonna be a dad. <laughs> now, mind you, his wife was 65 years old. <laughs> There is no biological way, no physical way, there is no chemical way that's supposed to happen. And yet, the Lord came to Abraham and said, Abraham, you're going to have a son in your old age. And yet the Bible actually says it happens. Abraham literally took God at his word. And I believe that one of the things that stops us from having a rock solid convictions is we think we know better than God. The scriptures are so clear, but as we read them, we read them with doubts. You know, I remember uh, two years ago, I actually learned why this is dangerous. And uh, two years ago, my son was born, and uh, he's two years now. And uh, newborns, they, they require a lot of attention. Yeah. And we were told, hey, uh, is this your first child? Yeah, okay, so keep it simple for you. Every two hours, change the diaper, feed them, keep them warm, you're good to go. I'm like, okay, I can do that. And um, being, being a newborn, um, you have to be up at night because the babies not only do they wake up, but you also have to make sure that they don't die in their sleep. You have to keep track of them. And um, because it was easier for me to stay up, I decided to stay up with the baby at night. And so I would let my wife sleep, and then I would do the night shift, and then I would sleep during the day. a lot of energy, but it's actually quite fun because they don't do much. You can leave him on the couch, go warm something in the microwave, and come back, he's not gone, he's there. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, there was one particular night, uh, my wife told me, please change the diaper every two hours. Oh. <laughs> now, in my arrogance, oh. I decided to not take that at face value. Oh. And so, uh, there was a particular night where my son was sleeping, and it was about between 3 to 6 a.m., and all of a sudden, I started to smell something. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's probably due to so I gotta do something about it. So I opened the diaper, and I had recently just come back from the microwave with a cup of coffee. And uh, I opened the diaper, because I was gonna drink it, <laughs> And, and, and it wasn't like a normal diaper where it's the, the doo doo stationary. It was projectile doo doo. It, it actually came at me and it came at the coffee cup and then it came over the couch. We, we threw the couch away. Oh no. And I remember immediately seeing that come out. I dropped my coffee. I start freaking out. The wipes I had wasn't enough, and then I had to leave them, and then I had to go run and get new wipes. It was all over the couch. <laughs> what do we learn from this? You know, I think that for many of us, sin and negativity and a lack of faith is projected into your life because we think we know better than God. How do we get rock solid convictions? Go to Acts 17. In Acts 17, we find a scripture that many of us are familiar with. In verse 10, the brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea, and when they arrived, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica because they received the work with all eagerness, examined the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Many of them therefore believed with not a few Greek women of high standing as well as men. Wow, this is incredible. The Bible tells us right here that Paul and Silas are traveling around starting churches and they enter into this town called Berea 
And in Berea, they meet an incredible group of people who are Berean Jews. And, and the Bible says that as Paul is preaching, he notices something extra special about these people. That these people didn't just eagerly believe the word, but they searched the scriptures every day to make sure that what they were told is not false, but was God's truth. Come on, bro. Come on. How do we get rock solid convictions? It's by digging into the Bible every day, making sure that what you believe is actually from God. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. And I gotta be honest with you guys, I just preach that. But if I'm being honest with you, in 2024, I have neglected this as many times. Come on, bro. But there have been many times where I chose not to put in the time, the effort, and the energy to read my Bible the way God wanted me to. There have been many times where I knew I should have done it, but I chose to do something else I wanted. And how did that impact my life? Well, because I wasn't close to God, I started to have anger come out. I became grouchy. It affected my wife, affected my son, affected my sisters and brothers. I couldn't be the man that God wanted me to be. And you're probably wondering, what happened? How, how did I get so far from God? Well, the answer simply was laziness. Go to Proverbs 26. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. In Proverbs 26, verse 14. It says, as a door turns on its hinges, so does a sluggard on his bed. <laughs> what happened to me? Why did I stop reading my Bible? It's because I chose an extra 30 minutes of sleep over time with God. And, and you know how it is when the alarm goes up in the morning? It's the worst noise in the world. <laughs> and then you look at your phone. And, and it's the you know how it is when you don't want to get out of bed, you become a genius. Uh -huh. You look at your phone, and you start to rationalize, mm, I'm supposed to be up by 5. But if I wake up at 5.30, I can do this in 10 minutes. Uh -huh. <laughs> that in 15 minutes. I can do that in 30. What? That extra 30 will be good. <laughs> and then you, you sleep that extra 30 minutes. And then it's 5.30. And then you look at your phone again, you're like, I really should get out. But you know, I can do that thing in five minutes. <laughs> that thing I really need to do, I can do it later. And if I, if I wake up at six, I'll be good. And, and I did that for many, many, many days. And I really do want to lift up my brother in the home because he actually helped me to repent. The About a month ago, uh, he and I sat down and um, we were having a, a discipling time. It's a time of mentoring with the scriptures. And he put out his phone and said, you know, Isaiah, on my phone, I have scriptures that I've been reading from my times with God. And I have them marked out by category so that if I see a disciple who's struggling in any of these areas, I can encourage them. With it. Wow. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, wow, this guy's been a Christian for six months. Wow. I've been a Christian for nine years, and I have not thought to do that. Wow. Thank God I repent, and I'm now having my quiet time to be again. This morning, I have a challenge for you. Do you have rock-solid convictions? What do I mean by that? Does your hope stay the same, even if the circumstances change? Come on, bro. And if the answer is no, then amen. Like me, brothers and sisters, I'm calling us to change, to get back into digging into the Bible every day. So that as you get closer to God with the scriptures, you can have rock solid convictions that can come through the hard times. Are oh, you with me right here, guys? Point number two rock solid proclamation. Go to Acts chapter five. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. All right. Love it. Come on, bro. You're preaching, bro. Proclaim it, bro. In Acts 5, verse 27, Tell us. we find that a number of years after 
Christianity has started, a lot of people are opposing this new faith. The apostles are arrested, and then they're released, and they go back to preaching again. We find later, after preaching, they're arrested again, and now they're put in prison overnight. We pick up the action in verse 27. It says that when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charge you not to teach in this name. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at the right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has chosen to those who obey him. Right here we find a rock solid proclamation. What is that? It's preaching the truth, even if it costs you your own personal safety. You got to imagine right here, these men are literally going toe to toe against the same guys who killed their rabbi just a couple years ago. And they get arrested and brought before the, the Sanhedrin. And the Sanhedrin says, we told you to stop preaching this message. And they say, we're not going to listen to you because we fear God. You know, I think that one of the things that can stop us from having rock solid proclamation is that we fear men over fearing God. What would happen if we feared God and not men? Well, let me give you a story. Back in 2020, you all remember COVID, the pandemic, a time we don't want to go back to. And uh, let's just say because of the pandemic, Many countries around the world reacted differently to the, to the pandemic. And uh, one of the countries that was heavy on the shutdown was India. And I mean, India, the law that was passed is you could not leave your house unless you were going for work, going to the hospital, or part of essential services. And uh, there were two disciples who happened to be studying the Bible with a young man who was two hours away from them. They had completed all the Bible studies, and he had made the decision for baptism. But you can't baptize yourself, and so someone had to go to him, count the cost, and baptize him. Now, this man lived two hours away, and these two disciples did not have any money left. And so they got on their feet and were walk and walked the two hours to him. Halfway through, the police stopped them. Police ask them, where are you going? Well, we're Christians, and we're going to go baptize somebody. <laughs> the response is, that's not essential services. Oh, wow. And in front of everyone, they beat them publicly. Wow. And then tell them, go home, or you go to jail. Well, these two brothers decided, we fear God, we don't fear men. Wow. They persisted and walked an extra hour so the young man's house, they counted the cost with them, and in the middle of the night, he was baptized into Christ. I really believe one of the things we need to kick out of our lives is people pleasing. Go to Galatians chapter 1. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Galatians 1. In verse 10. It says, For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. Right here, the Bible teaches that when a person becomes a people pleaser, by default, they cannot serve Christ. I have a challenge for us this morning. Come on, bro. I know for a fact that in all of our lives, there is somebody deep down in your heart that you really, really want them to like you back. 
Everyone has somebody. There's someone in your life that you find to be the most intimidating person in your life. And when we're around that person, we, we, we shrink back from our convictions. And, and I want to challenge you, whoever that person is, I want to challenge you to be a man and a woman who fears God and share your faith with them this week. Come on, bro. I put before you, I put before you that if you go toe-to-toe with that person, God will turn you into a bold lion and lioness for God. Are you with me? 23, my last point. Rock solid destination. Go to John chapter 14. In John 14, verse 1. Jesus is talking. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. Is that awesome or not, guys? God is a really awesome landlord. He has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself. That where I am going, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Point number three, rock solid destination. (laughs) What is the rock solid destination? It's the home that God is preparing right now for us. Jesus is talking to his disciples and saying, guys, I'm going to be gone for a while. But don't confuse my absence with negligence. I'm going to leave you guys for a while on earth. But while you're busy doing the Lord's work, I'm going to be preparing a room for you. A room custom made to all the intricate aspects to yourself. For those of you who like LeBron James, you got a LeBron James in your room. For, for all of you who love your, your little makeup stuff, you have one of those heavenly versions in heaven. For all of you who like dogs and cats, you get your, your custom made in heaven. It's right there for you. God actually is preparing a room for us. But the part that really moved my heart is where Jesus says that I'm going to come back and take you to myself. It's the same image of of when a groom comes and takes his wife and says, you're now mine permanently. And and, and that's what God wants to do with us. (laughs) That when he comes back, he's going to take us and we're going to become permanently his. No distance. No problems. No hardships. Face to face for eternity. I heard you guys like Taylor Swift, so I want to read your song. Yeah. 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 The campus, the campus students told me that, so I'm just pointing off. And uh, it's a song by Taylor Swift, and it's called Eyes Open. And it goes a little like this. Sing it, bro. Remember Rock Solid Destination? Right? I don't want to mess with that. If I sing it, I don't know what you're It says, everybody's waiting. Everybody's watching. Even when you're sleeping, keep your eyes open. The tricky thing is yesterday we were just children. Playing soldiers, just pretending. Dreaming dreams with happy endings. In our barkyards, winning battles with our wooden swords. But now we step into a cruel world where everybody stands and keeps score. Keep your eyes open. Everybody is waiting for you to break down. Everybody is watching to see the fallout. Even when you're sleeping, keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. I really believe for us, brothers and sisters, 
that in order for us to be rock solid in God, it's a matter of keeping our eyes open to what really matters. Jesus is Lord, and Jesus will come back. And so in closing, I read you the words of Jerry Rice. One of the greatest American football players of all time. He said, today, I will do the things that others will not do, so that tomorrow I can do the things that others cannot do. I really believe that if we build rock-solid convictions today, if we have a rock-solid proclamation today, if we focus on a rock-solid destination today, then I believe that tomorrow, God will do things through this church that others can't do. I love you too, God. Really.